Hey everyone, today I'm going to be teaching you a few lighting tricks in Photoshop CS5 which would be great for photographers looking to edit their photographs or if you're heading into photo manipulation and you want to create some dramatic lighting or just improve the lighting source in your photos. So I'm going to be trying to go through um, as fast as I can um, as well as step by step on how to do these one, uh, one by one and the first one I'm going to be doing is one lighting trick that I learnt from the photographer Emily Soto and if you haven't already checked out my video inspired by her where I do um, a soft dreamy effect um, in her style it is down in the description bar below I will put that there so let's start off with um, a brand new layer on top of your background and we want to get the paintbrush tool and make sure that the four color is set to black because this is the color we're going to be using to create the lighting and this is a very dramatic effect if you want it to be or it could be very very uh, subtle and you can just use it as um, a source as a way of creating um, depth in your photo so I'm going to make the brush size relatively small and then just painting it onto my photograph. I'm going to do around 300 pixels and make sure you've selected the soft brush and then we're going to go into Photoshop and we're going to paint this on. So making sure you're working on your brand new layer, I'm going to start painting this on to the edges of my photograph and getting the corners. And if you look closely at some professional photography, you can definitely see this effect being used. Um, it's really good if you want to put the focus onto your person or a certain object or just really intensify your image. Oops. Um, let's get rid of that. Um, so I'm just painting this onto my photo. And you can do multiple layers and build up the intensity of the darkness if you want. I'm probably just going to do two layers to show you how this effect actually works. So once you've painted this on, I'm going to be setting this layer on soft light. And then you can see it kind of um, melts into the image. And then I'm going to reduce the opacity down to around 50%. And you definitely have to play around with the setting so it looks natural in your photo or at the intensity that you want it to be. And you can see this is the effect on the photo. It's very subtle, but at the same time, it does an amazing um, change to the photo that you didn't otherwise have. So then what I can do is add on another layer of this um, onto my original photograph. And I'm going to take my brush again. Taking my black color, I'm going to be brushing this just right here near the train because I want this to be a little bit darker. But again, I still want my focus to be around the person. So what I'm going to do now is the same thing I did before. Put it on soft light and then reducing the opacity. And this time I'm just going to reduce it a little bit less. And you can see this area now becomes a bit darker. So that's the effect that that has had. And without the lighting, it looks like this. And now that we've changed it, it looks like this. And I think this is such an amazing way to create depth in your photo or create focus. Um, this is an additional step that you don't need to take, but I'm going to take a new layer and then I'm going to brush on some white colors and I'm going to change my color to white. Same size. I'm going to be lightening just specific parts of the photo. And then again, putting it on soft light, I'm going to reduce opacity. And you can see that's what that looks like. It's a very subtle glow around the areas that I've painted. So this is the first lighting trick that you could use, which would be especially great in photography. It's very subtle and you definitely don't have to play around with contrast and um, brightness and so forth. You can just manually edit it to the lighting that you prefer. So let's move on to the next one. So now that I have my original photograph again, 
The second one I'm going to be using is a filter. So I'm going to first take select my background layer and right click and duplicate layer, click OK. And this is going to be my lighting layer. So to make note of that, I'm going to rename this layer to lighting layer. Now going into filter, make sure you're on your lighting layer. I'm going to go into render and then I'm going to go into lighting effects right at the bottom. So once we reach this filter, we're going to adjust the egg shape tool in the middle of our image and you can move this around and change the size of your lighting source through these little dots on the outside and then if you um, want to change the intensity of your lighting source you can just change the little scroller in here. So I'm leaving the intensity at about 45% and then I'm going to make my lighting source quite big until it looks like this. And I'm moving it to the middle of the image. And then adjusting accordingly. Now I haven't changed any of the properties and I'm just going to click OK. Once that's done, make sure you're on your lighting layer and we're going to lower the opacity. I've lowered mine to around 55% which I think is a good setting. And you can see this is the effect we have on our image. Now this is definitely an easier way to do your lighting if you don't want to spend time manually touching it up. So instead you could just play around with um, the render tool and create a lighting source. Okay, so now the third tool we're going to be using, I'm sure you're all very familiar with, is in your um, left hand toolbar. And this is called Burn and Dodge. And pretty much the Dodge tool will lighten areas of your image while the Burn tool will, as it suggests, burn your image. So grabbing your background layer, this step is not necessary but I'm going to do it because I want the background of my photo to be very dark. So I'm going to duplicate the layer and I'm going to call this a dark background and then I'm going to go into image, adjustments and curves and I think this is such an amazing contrast slash brightness tool because um, it makes things very easy if you don't want to create your own lighting. So you can pull this little line up if you want it to be brighter or you can pull this little line down if you want your image to be darker. And I'm going to pull my line down and it depends on how bright or dark your image already is but you can see my output and my input figures and I'm going to click OK so now we've created this dark background on top of our original background now because I only want my background layer to be dark um, I'm going to use my eraser tool and I'm going to erase the parts that I don't want dark so that includes the incoming train and the rails and of course the figure in the photo and now what will happen is that the bottom layer will shine through and now we can do whatever dodge and burn we want to the bottom layer. So going back onto our original background layer I'm going to select my dodge tool and I want the train tracks to be very bright so I'm going to be dodging these areas and you can see it makes a really big difference it just lightens everything that I touch with the tool and I'm going to lighten her as well and then with the areas that I want to keep a little bit darker I'm going to right click and select the burn tool 
and then I'm going to darken these parts of the image. So now you can see that's what it looks like. Um, and dodge and burn is a very very easy way to lighten or darken your photo however I do find that if you overdo it it will destroy the quality of your image so be very very careful um, like I said if you don't want to manually do all of this you can just go into um, a curves adjustment or a brightness and contrast adjustment um, and then kind of slowly ease into getting used to um, using your paintbrush tool um, or different filters to create your lighting. But I do think this is a really great way to go about um, creating the lighting as well. So pretty much that is my three ways of creating lighting in Photoshop CS6. I hope this was really really helpful um, and I'm really hoping you take something away from this because if you don't like one lighting trick that I showed you I'm sure another will appeal. Well at least I hope it will. Um, so do remember to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you next time with a new tutorial. Bye!